Noel Bach. Trichotillomania, or for those of us who struggle with it, just trick. Trick is one of many disorders that falls under the category of compulsive body focused repetitive behaviors, including skin picking and nail biting. Trichotillomania itself is a disorder that leads to hair loss from repetitive self pulling of hair. While the underlying biology is not clearly understood, Research shows that people with trichotillomania generally have a neurologically based predisposition to pull their hair. We often also struggle with anxiety and depression. Pulling does not hurt, nor are we trying to damage ourselves. In fact, it's quite the opposite. It is a coping mechanism that I and many others have developed to help self-soothe and self-comfort in the face of anxiety and many other difficult emotions. To us, it feels good. I had no idea of Trick's existence before it came creeping into my life 12 years ago when I was 17 years old. Actually, it's amazing how few people know about trichotillomania, despite the fact that it's estimated 2 to 4% of the population suffers from it. <coughs> Trick was my first encounter with a force, an urge so powerful that I wasn't able to overcome it, despite the fact that I could see the damage I was causing to myself physically and despite the shame and emotional turmoil it caused and still causes inside of me. People who don't understand say, just stop, you're doing this to yourself. <coughs> I say, I wish it was that easy. I discovered trick, or rather it discovered me, when I moved home to begin the life of a normal teenager. I had just experienced an abrupt end to a lifelong pursuit as a career as an elite figure skater. At age 16, I had moved 1,000 miles away from my loving family and my lifelong support network to train with a new coach. Lonely and in pain from a previous injury, I was thrown into a mental and physical limbo for nearly a year. When an MRI finally revealed a fracture that would forever prevent me from training at an elite level again, I quit skating, and my life turned upside down. It came stealthily at first, an eyelash here, an eyebrow there, and a feeling of relief and comfort with no real visible damage done. But within a year, Trick was tearing through my life, <coughs> ripping at every string of my self-confidence. When deciding what event or incident I might describe to you today that best conveys my struggle with Trick over the past 12 years, I reflected on all of the shame, embarrassment, and sadness it has caused me. I remember the first time ever that I wasn't able to wear my hair down because of a thin spot on the crown of my head. There was the time I cried in the bathroom while getting ready for my prom because I couldn't figure out how to hide the bald spot on the side of my head with any hairdo except for a plain ponytail. There was the time I buzzed off all of my long blonde locks my first year in college, believing it would help me stop pulling. There was the day my new boyfriend asked why I wouldn't take off my hats around him, and I confessed the truth about my trick to him through tears of fear which, by the way, he took beautifully and gracefully, and he's been my rock of support ever since. There was the day I got fitted for a wig so that I could go to job interviews without facing judgment. I waited in the back room of a local salon, surrounded by brochures and books for women with cancer. There was the first time I wore my wig in public, absolutely terrified that somebody would be able to tell it wasn't my real hair. After two years with the wig, there was the day when I decided that my hair had grown out enough that my coworkers might not notice the change, so I was able to stop wearing it. Now that I no longer wear the wig, there are innumerable occasions, weddings, holidays, swimming at the beach, windy days, when I long to do my hair in pretty ways. A braid, a loose updo, down around my shoulders, loose and free. But I can't. I still have thin patches, and all different lengths of hair that stick out if not slick back. The most important thing though, and the thing that I really want to tell you about my struggle with Trick, is that I am improving with a lot of diligence, hard work, and support. There are good days, and there are certainly still bad days. There are days when I don't have a desire to touch my hair even once. There are days when it takes all the strength that I can muster up inside of me to bring my hand down and away from my head after pulling out clumps at a time. 
but I'm learning a lot about my disorder and how to manage and control it. And my hair is growing back, slowly. I have come to understand that my trip will always be an internal struggle that requires constant diligence and support in order for me to manage it effectively. There's no medication, treatment, or magic bullet that will make it disappear. It's a part of me that will probably always exist, yet it is just that, one part of me. In the past few months, I have been lucky enough to work with a psychologist and researcher who specializes in trick. I have found an amazing support group of others who struggle in their addiction to hair pulling just like me. And that boyfriend I talked about, the one who took the news of my trick so gracefully, well he's still my rock and the love of my life. And we're getting married next year. And I'm striving toward what I want more than anything is for my trick not to define my appearance on our wedding day. I'm going to have a head full of long, thick, gorgeous hair, and it's going to be done into a beautiful, loose, and elegant updo without a second thought to any embarrassing thin spots, the way I've always dreamed it would be. Thank you.